Okay, so this is a more difficult pulley question. Um, it is very similar, though, to a question we did previously that was in the forces section. So if you haven't done that, the two kilogram object on the five kilogram object, and the five kilogram objects being um, pushed by an applied force, then you should watch that, and the link should be right here. On this question, though, we have the two kilogram objects sitting on the five, and there is a coefficient of friction mu between these two objects of 0 0.10, but there's also a coefficient of friction mu between the five kilogram object and the surface, and that is 0 0.20. Now, the two kilogram object is connected by a rope through a pulley to the five kilogram object. The five kilogram object is connected by a different rope to a pulley to a four kilogram object, which is hanging. So the first thing we have to ask ourselves is which way is this thing going to go, if it goes at all? Because remember, if friction isn't, is too strong, it might overcome gravity and the system might simply not start. So we have to decide which way it will go. Well, I think it's pretty clear that there's no way friction is going to lift this object up against gravity. So the only possibility really is that the four kilogram object goes down, which would cause this pulley to spin in a positive direction. So now. When I do this question, everything that helps this pulley turn clockwise is going to be my positive direction, my positive x direction. So what do I do? Well, when you're a little better at these problems, you'll see that there's a bit of a shortcut here. But I'm going to do it the way I teach my students to do it, which is to simply draw a free by diagram of each object separately. And that's what we're going to do. So the two kilogram object first has a mass of 2, which obviously means that there's a force of gravity of 2g. There's a normal force pushing up on it. There's a tension, which is to the left, which I'll call T1. That's this rope. And there will be friction fighting it. Well, that That's friction between the two and the five. Which way is X going to be on this particular diagram? Well, if this gets pulled, it's pulled this way, then positive is right on the five. But because of the pulley, positive is left on the two. That's both positive directions. So on this guy, positive x would be to the left. Hopefully that makes some sense. We can see, I think, pretty clearly that Fn and Fg are going to be equal. Fn minus Fg equals 0, so they're going to be equal. And they're both going to be 2g. And I think we can also see that the force of friction, which is mu Fn, is therefore going to be 0.1 times 2g, which is 1.96 newtons. And I'm just going to go ahead and write that on here for simplicity's sake. This force of friction is 1.96 newtons, and I've got it written there. Now, my equation for the x direction will say that T1 minus FF equals MA, which is T1 minus 1.96 equals 2A. And that is what I will call equation number one. Now, I'm going to draw a free body diagram of the 5 kilogram object. Try that here. Five kilogram object has a force of gravity, which is of course five g's. It has a normal force, Fn, which is not going to be five g's. There is a rope pulling to the left. That's the same rope that's pulling to the left on two. It's T1. There's also, of course, the Newton's third law reaction to this force of friction. There's friction to the right on the 2 from the 5, which means the 2 must also be pushing to the left on the 5. So there's also going to be this force of friction here, which is 1.96. It's got to be the same size. This force and this force have to be equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. And they are. Great. Okay, there's also obviously a T tension to the right here, which I'll call T2, the tension in this rope. And we're not quite done yet because of this mu, which is 0.2. There's friction here between the surface of the table and the 5 kilogram object. So I'll draw that down here, and I'll call it FF. But it's not going to be 1.96. It's going to be 0.2 times FN. It's going to be mu FN. But what is FN? Well, if you haven't done that last video, think about it for a second. FN is not going to be equal to 5G because think about it over here. The normal force on the 2 is being pushed up by the 5. The 5 is pushing up on the 2, and that's the normal force. Newton's third law says the 2 must also be pushing down on the 5. So there's going to be this force down on the 5, which is going to be 2 g's. It's the same as the normal force. It is the third law reaction to the normal force on the other objects. Sounds complicated, but hopefully it makes sense. Imagine you're the 5, the 2 is pushing down on you. 
it means the normal force here is going to have to be 7 g's. It's going to have to be big enough to balance out gravity and the 2 kilogram object's weight, which makes a lot of sense. But that's the normal force we have to use to calculate the force of friction between the table and the 5. We've got to use the mass of the 2, in other words. So this is 7 g's. To keep it simple, I'm going to call that 13.72, which is what I think you get if you go 7 g's times 0.2. 13.72. Which way is x on this equation? Positive is this way. T2 is going to be positive. So to the right is x and up is y. So the equation here will be T2 minus T1 minus the force of friction, which is 1.96, minus the other force of friction, which is 13.72, will equal the mass, which is 5 times the acceleration A. That's equation 2. Okay, fine, we have one more object, the four kilogram object. I should have room to draw that here. Four kilograms has a weight of four Gs, and it has a rope pulling up, which I will call T2. In this diagram, the positive direction is down, because the pulley has redirected the force. I pull it down, that pulls that right, it helps this thing turn clockwise, so down over here is going to be X. And my equation here is going to say 4G minus T2 equals 4A. That's my third equation. So I guess I have three equations and three unknowns, and that sounds complicated, but it isn't. Because just like always, if I add my equations, if I've done this properly, the tensions will cancel out, right? Because they're Newton's third law. So if I have a positive T2 in this equation, I have a negative T2 here. If I have a negative t1 in this equation, hey look, I've got a positive one here. And if I add the equations, all those t's are going to cancel out. So I can just add equation 1. I can add equation 3. Adding equation 1 here will give me 4g, sorry, equation 3, minus t2 equals 4a. And adding equation 1 into it here, I get t1 minus 1.96 equals 2a. Adding those up, I have 4g. I've got t2 minus t2. I've got t1 minus t1 minus 1.96 minus 1.96 minus 13.72 equals 11a. And this sentence here, this equation, this little math sentence, should make sense to us if we look at the whole thing. What's driving this? What's the only force that's making this go? Well, it's the force of gravity on the 4 kilogram object. It's 4 g's. What's preventing the system from going, or what's slowing it down? Well, there's a force of friction on this guy, which is 1.96. There's that force of friction also exerted on this guy, so that's another 1.96. And there's a force of friction between the the table and 5, which is 13.72. And this is the net force on the whole system. And this is the mass of the whole system times acceleration. So hopefully that makes a lot of sense. I can rearrange this and I can solve it and I can see that acceleration equals 1.96 meters per second squared, which on a test I would probably round to 2. Uh, I definitely would. 